For over a half a century, biblical scholar and Near East historian Zachariah Sitchin devoted his life to proving the link between human beings and the Nephilim, giants, mentioned in the book of Genesis. Sitchin's research identifies them as ancient aliens known as the Anunnaki, who came to Earth from the planet Nibiru. Here's more on his life and legacy with my interview with his niece, Janet Sitchin. There in Azerbaijan, in a city named Baku, ancient carvings on a rock would reflect images like an astronomical observatory showing the sun, various constellations, and a primitive astronomical table. Zachariah was born in 1920 to parents Isaac and Genia Sitchin. My grandparents, uh, his parents, moved from Russia to, to Tel Aviv in 1925, and he was five years old. So his education was, uh, it was the time of the British mandate. So it was through that system. Excuse me, my teacher, uh, why do you say giants when the word in Hebrew is nephilim, uh, coming from the root nephol, which means to come down, to descend. And uh, I was expecting and to be complimented by the teacher when she said something like, sit, in, sit down, you don't question the Bible. I really didn't know that he was doing this until the first book was published in 1976. And I was still pretty young at that time. And I didn't really read The Twelfth Planet, which was his first book, until quite a bit later mm. and understand the significance of of what his research and theories were. For one thing, he took a very scholarly approach. And my uncle was like, here's this research, here, here's this evidence, here's more evidence, here's more evidence. And, and his publisher finally told him, you know, we don't need 10 pieces of evidence. Many of the seal impressions that we have that are so significant to seeing how things were depicted in those days, be it humans or gods, come from these envelopes. Anything that was a Semitic language, he felt was pretty easy for him to learn because it was similar to Hebrew. And so having that basis, he was able to, to learn kind of more ancient Hebrew plus, um, plus Sumerian cuneiform and Akkadian cuneiform. So he, he was reading these uh, ancient documents and, um, and looking at what they said, and they tell stories about the Anunnaki. The Anunnaki um, is Sumerian for those who from heaven to earth came. And these stories are repeated in different cultures. So they're in Akkadian, they're in Sumerian, they're Egyptian, they are, even if you look at the pantheon of Roman and Greek gods, they're the same personalities. They're very much probably the same people. I could give him a lot more ideas about the most probable orbit of Nibiru, which is very important. Nibiru, they were having problems with their atmosphere, that they were losing their atmosphere. They had a ruler for the whole planet, and they deposed the ruler. And he was afraid that he was going to be assassinated. So he took off in his personal spacecraft. He found that there was gold in the water of the Persian Gulf. And that was important because they were using gold particles to repair their atmosphere. So um, he discovered that there was some here, and he started mining it, and he managed to communicate back to Nibiru. And so they sent a scouting party, basically, from Nibiru to come here. And this included Enki, who became, um, you know, Lord of Earth. And later on, his brother Enlil, who was Lord of the Command, and uh, there was sibling rivalry between the two of them. And although they found a lot of gold, it was hard work, and the astronauts didn't like it. They said, this is not what we signed up for. You know, we're not, we're not miners. So they started looking around and there were hominids that had started developing on Earth. And they started out trying to do genetic engineering on the hominids to create a worker. And it didn't really work well until they mixed their own DNA. So they basically had the Anunnaki women were surrogate mothers and they implanted, um, they did in vitro fertilization and implanted uh, the embryo of the atom. They talk about the atom like Humankind is, the first one was the atom. 
they, they are about seven to 10 feet tall. And of course, we're much uh, shorter than that. But otherwise, we, we look like them. And so if you consider that in Genesis, it talks about um, we were created in God's image. Um, and you think of, of that as God with small g and it's the Anunnaki. That's what we look like. If you look at the creation myth uh, of, you know, God creating man, this fits into it, although it's the Anunnaki and um, not not the creator of all, which is something the Anunnaki believed in the creator of all. And they talked about that in some of the, their literature. Somewhere along the line, Enki gave man the ability to procreate. Or the other way was that Anunnaki men could impregnate human women. We didn't eat from the tree of life. We only ate from the tree of knowledge. And you know, we know knowledge has a sexual context. The sons of God saw the daughters of mankind, and they were fair, and they took as their wives any they chose. Who are the sons of God and the daughters of man as distinct groups? So you think about this as being the Anunnaki men and the human women. And um, the, the word fair in Hebrew also has a nuance of meaning compatible. And my uncle felt that meant genetically compatible. And so they were able to procreate. Well, we have arrived at Haran, the city where Abraham dwelt with his father and brother and nephew. The Lord said to Abraham, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. The one thing that I know that he mentioned in his writing was talking about Abraham's role. He feels that he was um, on a mission that the Anunnaki sent him on. The book, The, the Wars of Gods and Men, uh, talks about kind of the infighting uh, of the Anunnaki. So I mentioned that Enlil and Enki were rivals. They were brothers. Enlil was the official son. Enki was the firstborn son. Uh, but not by the official wife. And there were some uh, fighting and God, uh, you know, between them, and they enlisted help from, from man. <laughs> My uncle thinks that there were nuclear weapons detonated in the Sinai Peninsula. And as part of these wars, there, there are talks in, in the Sumerian or, or the ancient people's stories about an evil wind, and the evil wind killed people. It didn't kill, you know, buildings. So the evil wind was basically the nuclear fallout. Abraham may have been sent to, to kind of command uh, the people that were guarding the nuclear weapons to keep them out of the hands of the people that, you know, ended up using them. He felt that the Temple Mount was one of the landing places, so that the, the rockets would come down, and that's why it was built with such kinds of stones at the base of it to be able to support the weight and all of that. But Jerusalem was the, the, the central command for, uh, that's what he felt, and, and that's part of why it is so meaningful to all the religions. My uncle thinks that the, the last time the Bureau came was about 600 BC, so it rotates around our sun every 3,600 years. But Nibiru is rotating this way, so it, it's, we don't necessarily know where to look for it. For example, there is a cylinder seal from thousands of years ago that has a picture of the solar system with planets revolving around the sun and uh, in their relative positions and with a 10th uh, planet there, so still including Pluto. were seeing for the first time Uranus and Neptune, they were as described by the Sumerian people. So one is blue-green and the other was green-blue, and it was accurate. Um, so the thousands of years before telescopes, these are planets you cannot see with the naked eye, the results of the Voyager uh, images were exactly what the Sumerians described.